Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking another look at the five color legends deck, which got some nice upgrades in Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Of course, this is still a Joda of the Unifier deck. This is one of the main payoffs for the archetype, giving all our legendaries a lot of extra power and toughness. And whenever we cast a legendary spell, we get to cascade into a cheaper spell and put it in play. So that can be quite powerful, especially in combination with a Relic of Legends, enabling us to generate a lot of mana with our legends, even the same turn we played them since they can still tap for mana even though they might have summoning sickness. And then, thanks to Outlaws of Thunder Junction, we picked up these legendary enchantments, a cycle of joints up enchantments, and the fact that these are legendary means that we can find them with the Cascade ability on Joda, but they can also trigger Joda if it's already in play, so that's also quite synergistic. And at one mana, there's a Tiny Bones joints up, which when it enters makes the opponent discard a card, and whenever a legendary creature enters under our control, any number of players each mill a card and lose one life, so that can also maybe finish off the opponent if they're low enough, and occasionally we might also want to mill ourselves if we can see the top card with Sigarda, for instance, and we don't want to draw it, then now we can also maybe get rid of it. Then at two mana, there's a Vraska joins up, giving all our current creatures a death touch counter, and then whenever a legendary we control deals damage to an opponent, we now get to draw a card, so that can also be a nice card draw engine. Then when a Kellen joins up, we can plot a card with mana value three or less from our hand, so we can cast it for free in a future turn, but more importantly, whenever a legendary creature enters under our control, we can put a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control, so that can also get out of hand pretty quickly. And then at 4 mana, there's Annie joins up, which we've already built an entire deck around, deals 5 to an opposing creature or planeswalker when it enters, giving the deck a little bit more removal, and then can help double triggered abilities of legendary creatures we control, which also includes Joda, so we can maybe cascade it twice with Annie joins up on the battlefield, so that can also be very nice. And finally, Heraktos also joins up, as it can reanimate one of our creatures and give it two additional plus one counters, and now whenever a legendary creature we control dies, it deals damage equal to that creature's power to target opponent, so if they wipe the board without exiling our creatures at least, we now can deal a lot of damage on the way out, and can also be a nightmare for other creature decks to deal with. So these are the joints up enchantments. Of course, they aren't the easiest to cast, since if you take a look at our mana base, we're definitely relying on cards like Secluded Courtyard and Cavern of Souls to make sure we can cast all our spells, and these actually don't help us cast these multicolored enchantments, so we're mostly counting on Relic of Legends to fix our mana so we can cast these in a timely fashion. And then going over the rest of the deck, we do want another one mana legend to maybe cascade into when playing a two drop, and Ashnod fits the bill. It's also human, and that's also important as you'll notice because we're playing Cavern and Courtyard naming human to fix our colors for Joda. We want most of our legendaries to be human so we can actually cast them. And then at 2 mana we've got the full set of Verona, which is another staple in this archetype, as it can tap to draw and discard, and whenever we cast a legendary spell we can untap Verona, so we can activate it multiple times in the same turn to sculpt our hand, and it's also very synergistic with Relic of Legends, and even with Catilda, so we can maybe make mana with Verona, cast a legendary, untap it, make more mana, and sort of empty our hand that way. And then Rona has excellent synergy with Inti, which can exile cards whenever we discard, also pretty good with the channel lanes. Then we've got a one of Denik as a nice life-linking creature that we can also maybe get back out of the graveyard if we discard it to Rona. We've got the Dauntless General, which can protect our team, at least our humans, by giving them Hexproof and Indestructible if we sacrifice it, and also exiles a player's graveyard when it enters. We also have the Loyal Bodyguard, which is pretty similar. And then we have a one of Melira, which can also be sacrificed to potentially protect one creature, and happens to be pretty nice against poison decks as well. And then we already mentioned Catilda, very nice alongside Rona, but just a nice way to ramp out our more expensive legends in this deck. And then at three mana, we've got a one of Adlin, a nice creature to apply pressure with, and Vigilance means we can play offense and defense with it. We've got Wily Duke, another new addition, also very synergistic with Relic of Legends and Catilda, as we can tap it to now gain a life and draw card on a 4-2 Vigilance. Without Relic or Catilda, it's not the most impressive card, admittedly, but I've been liking the synergies so far. Then we've got Kellen the Kid, a 3-3 flying lifelink. If it didn't have any additional abilities, it would still be playable in this archetype, but occasionally you can put additional cards from your hand into play, especially when paired with Joda the Unifier, so that can also go off, and also has a bit of synergy with the plot mechanic from Kellen Joins Up, of course. Then we've got a Lagrella as a creature that acts as removal when it enters, so similar to a Brutal Cathar. 
and then a Shana can also reward us for gaining life as we can now draw a few extra cards with it. Also plays well with Danik and Kellen. Then four copies of Relic, since it's kind of a must-have in this deck. And then at four mana we've got an Artai Resurrected. Can be pretty important to counter a board wipe from the opponent, but can also be used as removal. Then the partners also have excellent synergy with Joda, since the number of counters scales with their power. So if we have a Joda in play we can now give a lot more counters to a creature, and maybe even give Joda itself haste so it can attack for a ton of damage. And then Sigarda, the only non-human creature in this deck, but it does synergize with humans as we can now play them off the top and also helps protect them by giving them hexproof. So it can also be a very nice addition in a grindier matchup. And then at 5 mana we've got a 1 of Jero and Hazoret, which we ideally want to attack with right away. A 5-4 with Vigilance and Haste if we're close to empty-handed. And then can find additional legendaries that we can cast for free. So that also synergizes with Kellen the Kid and uh, can also of course go off with Joda in play. And then the mana base has all of these multicolored lands with Cavern, Plaza and Courtyard. Plaza very useful at not only giving us a bit of utility in the late game, but actually helps us cast the legendary enchantments. And then we've got a mix of fast lands to round out the mana base, as well as some uh, channel lands, which of course get a nice discount from controlling legendaries and give the deck a little bit more interaction. And then a couple basics in case we need to search them up in the face of a Field of Ruin type effect. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Not the most exciting hand, but definitely keepable with uh, good mana to even cast our legendary enchantment. And then Rona, a good way to try and find our key cards. Put it on blue-white, so we're probably going to need Cavern to make our stuff uncounterable. Although our deck is certainly weak to board wipes in general. Opponent's gonna deduce. And we could try to join up here by playing Plaza and then get an extra attack in. That seems fine, so we can first draw and discard. Ooh, find a relic. That might be even better now. Although they can counter the relic. I guess they can also counter if Raska joins up for what it's worth. So, secluded courtyard can probably go. And then I guess if they counter if Raska joins up, it's not a disaster. Right, opponent deduces once again. So now we can just attack to draw one. And then next turn we can maybe try to double spell. Demolition Field can hit Cavern of Souls, so we probably want to make use of it while we can. Also have to watch out for Wandering Emperor now, so maybe not a bad turn for Relic of Legends plus Katilda, for instance. Well, I guess what we could also do is attack first with Arona while we keep Plaza available for Wandering Emperor. Although, let's see, I guess yeah, if they make a Samurai we have Death Touch. So I could start by attacking, but then I won't have the mana to play Relic into Katilda, although I could go Katilda into Relic. So yeah, maybe I just uh, start by attacking here. Alright, that worked. So first we want to try to untap Rona with an uncounterable Katilda. And then Rona being a human makes mana with Katilda, so we can still try and resolve a relic. Opponent deducing a third time. So definitely expecting a Sunfall next turn. That resolves. Hopefully our opponent's not packing farewell, since then they can also clean up our artifact and enchantment. Alright, no Sunfall. So opponent's being patient. We can just once again attack, although this time we also have to watch out for Restless Anchorage ambushing Katilda. So I could go for Partners, even though it would be a decent follow-up to a Sweeper. And then Partners grows Katilda. Yeah, sure. And then in the meantime, I can uh, loot with Rona. Since I don't think we need more mana, do we? 
Well, maybe we do actually. Can play another Relic of Legends. Opponent is gonna hit the Cavern of Souls. And we'll get Plains. Alright, so I won't be able to make my author creatures uncounterable now. But uh, maybe an opportunity to play another Relic of Legends with the floating mana. And then don't need to worry about Anchorage anymore. If we connect, we draw two. So yeah, Vraska joins up, did some nice work for us. So next turn they get to cast our board wipe, and yeah, we gotta hope it's not a farewell. Yeah, it's a farewell. Well, at least they also lost their clue token. Airtie would have been a nice way to counter it. So for now, Kellen joins up, can exile Shanna, and then still play Rona. Adeline's not bad either. So maybe start there. Can pay for the uh, No More Lies counter spell. Could also just go with Shanna, keep up airtie, in case they're trying to set up another sweeper. And then Rona can maybe loot away Lagrella in the meantime. Yeah, I guess that's uh, reasonable. I guess Iganjo is not much of an improvement here, although it does allow me to play a 3-drop and keep up airtie. Lagrella also has a little bit of play in the face of sweepers, as you can kind of exile your own creatures, so they'll eventually come back. So yeah, there's a few factors to consider. But I don't hate the idea of just playing Adlin. For now we also have Plaza of Heroes available still. And then we'll have Ertai for another counter spell. Melira can go. Doesn't really help in the face of sweepers at exile. And now our threats are pretty significant thanks to Kellen joins up. Opponent takes it, not even blocking the token with a restless anchorage. So I gotta hope that they don't have the mana to play Sweeper and cast a counter spell on Airtie since we no longer have Cavern. But they might have Sunfall plus no more lies here. Alright, another farewell. We can just counter. And that might just be a game here. Well, the first farewell was very good for them. The second one might have been better off as a Sunfall. And attack for the win. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. This is what the deck is all about. Rona into Relic into Joda. And then Rona, potentially in combination with Relic, unlocks the possibility of casting more spells in the same turn to immediately get value of Joda. Red black, tiny bones. I'm not interested in trading, but they might have removal here. Cut down answers Rona. Next turn, probably go for Relic. Opponent seems to be a Grixis colored crime deck, maybe. So they might be able to steal our Rona next turn. Playing Shanna is an option, I guess, but I don't really want to trade it for Tiny Bones either. I think we just go Relic into Joda next turn. Even though. We'll have to worry about cards like Go for the Throat. We at least have a backup Joda. Put on Dos Cast or Rona. And we'll give Joda a try. And 
if they don't answer it right away, next turn we can potentially go off. Arona's gonna look for a removal spell. Discarding Titania, so might be a four color Legends deck after all. Could see an Airtai take care of Joda here. And if our opponent is on a Legends deck, I'm sure they wouldn't mind access to our Joda using Tiny Bones. But it's not gonna happen this turn. Rona also good synergy with Inti. Opponents playing Rona themselves, so they built their deck around it. They've already played Land for the turn. But now Odawara can cheaply bounce Joda. Alright, so yeah, the opponent's going off. They still haven't found a permanent solution to Joda, but maybe they wouldn't need it. If they can just kind of tempo us out here. So if I... Let's think about this. Play Joda. I wouldn't be able to play anything else. I could double spell Shana and Adlin, however. And then next turn play Joda. Even if it's not quite as satisfying as enabling Joda by playing it first. If I play Joda, I also wouldn't be able to keep up my Ganjo. So it's kind of a close call here. Yeah, maybe going Shana plus Adlin's the safer play. And then now we've got a few blockers lined up. And yeah, our opponent found go for the throat. So playing Joda would not have worked out. Takes out Shanna. Adlin can still block. Although Tiny Bones is gonna go through and play Shanna. Opponent finding another Rona. Yeah, opponent gets to have Shanna. We get to have Joda, and hopefully it can stick around for a couple turns. Another Relic doesn't do me too many favors here, so can keep that in hand for now. If I attack with Adlin, they do get to block my 1-1 token with Shanna to gain 3, so we only end up dealing 2 damage here. But I guess it's still worth it, since I don't expect him to triple block. Opponent finds yet another Rona. They can also transform it if they'd like, but the looting ability is pretty synergistic with Inti, as they find another Rona. Is that the last one? They might still have one in their deck somewhere, although maybe that's the last one, actually. This is still our copy of Rona. Should we find a way to bounce it, we'll get it back. So maybe that's why they prefer keeping their copy now. Nope, still keeping mine, so they can activate once again. Finds Cavern of Souls. And now a Relic of Legends. One card in hand. Tiny Bones attacks. There's nothing in my graveyard, so I don't think I bother trading. Opponent can maybe cast something else, and it's going to be the Deepest Betrayal, actually. That's a powerful one. But Annie joins up. This could be amazing here. Cast it, take out... It's also kind of a decision. Deepest Betrayal might make the most sense, since we can keep two cards in hand, so it cannot transform, or we could kind of break up this engine they've got going on. But we'll see what Joda finds. Hits Wily Duke, pretty nice with Relic of Legends as well. Yeah, let's take out their Bat God. And then now Joda's gonna trigger twice if Annie joins up as well, finding multiple legends. So, yeah, we're living the dream here. Triggers twice thanks to Annie joins up. And now we can still play Lagrella, which is also gonna trigger twice thanks to Annie joins up, trigger Joda. 
So this is definitely the turning point. Well, sometimes these uh, legendary enchantments are uncastable, since the mana's not always easy, but they are quite impactful if you get to go off with Joda. And then we found Rona. I'll take it. Finds General. And I guess I could have even tapped Rona for mana first, but yeah, opponent has seen enough. Well, that was a pretty awesome comeback. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a uh, keepable hand. Turn to Katilda, could maybe set up turn 3 Sigarda. Let's start with probably Courtyard on Human. Alright, put on blank green. Yeah, we could play Katilda first. Rona also makes sense. Because they're likely going to have removal. If they have go for the throat, they can take out Sigarda. And that's kind of our draw engine. In which we would like to protect. Yeah, let's go with Rona. And then next turn, if Rona survives, we can play Katilda. And then Rona can make a bunch of mana for us. But pretty happy that Rona soaked up a go for the throat. Found another one. I guess we can run it back. Rona is pretty synergistic with Cotilda since we can tap it for mana, play a legendary, untap it, make more mana, and another go for the throat. Alright, now Sigarda is an option, or we can double spell if we want to play around an edict effect like Liliana, but if they had a Liliana we would have seen it here. So I'll go for Sigarda and hope they're out of removal. It's gonna be a shield rip, that's fine. Courtyard on top. So. Sigarda now is not a human, so it won't be able to tap for mana if we play Katilda. So instead, I could play a bunch of two drops. Because the problem with playing partners here is that it still dies to cut down. Although, never mind, I guess Sigarda protects it from cut down. So we could go partners and then start growing Sigarda. And our opponent's going to need to find another go for the throat, most likely, to answer Sigarda. Alright, Shieldreds. That's a good one, too. I'll keep Sigarda in that case. And Wally Duke, we can play off the top and synergize us quite well with Katilda as well once we get to untap next turn. And I could even play a Shana. Keep the cards rolling. Now we have to be a little careful if our opponents gets aggressive here because we are at 12 but if they animate cottage i'm happy to trade all right opponent sends in their creature land so we do have to block let's do some math so next turn we know we're drawing jaron hazard i can attack with it if i am one or fewer cards in hand so we could maybe go katilda and then play jaron hazard Although I don't want to tap Wily Duke, because then I draw a card and I'm no longer empty-handed necessarily, so we might have to trade it off instead. Then play Katilda, tap Shana to cast Jeru, so that can attack. So now we're hitting them for 11, which is still one short of lethal. So yeah, this is kind of interesting. So if I don't have guaranteed lethal next turn, how does it change my decision making? We could double block. One of the opponent's creatures, perhaps, although both of my creatures would trade for it. Now let's just trade for Cottage, and then I guess I'll throw in Shana just to gain three, and they can decide which creature to take out. Sure. Alright, opponent took out Wily Duke. And there's a Relic of Legends on top. So yeah, we can make the play I described, but that doesn't 
actually uh, guarantee lethal here. Still puts us in a pretty decent spot. I can just attack with Jero, leave Sigarda back. We get to play another free legendary. This has vigilance, so it can hang back as well. So I think I still like that sequence. Or we can tap Sigarda and attack with Shana. Although, never mind, this is not a human, so it doesn't tap for mana. So yeah, we'll stick to this plan. Just send Jeru. Finding... What do we want? Kellen as another lifelinker. Could be alright. Adlin will have 5 power if they don't take anything out. So that could trade by itself for one of the opponent's shieldreds. Yeah, another lifelinker might be slightly better. And it flies as well to deal those last points of damage. And then just a Blooming Marsh coming up. So we have a 9 in the air, but our opponent still has a food token they can sacrifice to gain life. Their shield are not too close to transforming yet. And it's going to be a Glissan next, so that can stall out the ground. Take our draw step. Can play Inti. Now we do have to be careful not to draw too many cards with Shana's ability since Shieldred would still drain us. And then I guess we exile our own graveyard. Sure. Okay. So, I can go to attackers, just send in the flyers for now. We also have Katilda we can activate, potentially. Could still send in Jeru just to trigger the ability, but we would lose it to Glissa, and there's no way to give it indestructible right now, other than, I guess, general. So I guess I could still work. Alright, fine. We'll send in Jeru as well. And then Shanna probably wants to tap for mana here. Wouldn't be able to channel Odawara from exile. And we actually missed with Jeru. Okay. So we'll activate Katilda. Opponent has to sank the food token, and then they're still taking 12, so this should still get there. And we can sacrifice to protect Jeru as well. Okay, Xaxis. Close one here against Golgari midrange. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and uh, we've got a hand where two of our spells we currently cannot cast. No black mana for Tiny Bones and Vraska. I do get to play Katilda, but I also have two green sources awkwardly with Bosage and Forest, which makes it harder to play Joda. So, gonna have to mulligan sadly. This hand's a little bit better. And then, what do we get rid of? Might be one of my two drops, since I'll still be able to play Tiny Bones pretty easily, thanks to Relic. And then... Maybe split a difference, keep one of the two life linkers in case we're up against aggro. I can't play any of my two drops at the moment with my dual lands, so we'll need to draw another land regardless. And then bodyguard could maybe protect something important later. Picked up Aruna that we can actually cast. Okay, opponent with Jace, so they are on blue-white control. Shrink down Rona. And uh, yeah, we gotta draw into a land here. We did. Probably don't need to keep double Relic. And then Rona can still loot end of turn. And Jace is going to draw. 
milling both of our basics, which is good to keep in mind in case they field of ruin us. And they might have a Wandering Emperor here to exile Rona. Yep. Fair enough. Ooh, Jeroen has rats. I won't actually have haste next turn to attack with it right away. Vraska joins up, is not going to be at its best when we need to attack Planeswalkers. So that might have to go. And then... For now, we can play Kellen plus another 2-drop here. And then could make it the uh, general to exile their graveyard to get rid of Memory Deluge, although we're not really in a hurry. So maybe I prefer the extra power on Bodyguard. And then whatever creature they shrink down, we can maybe tap to help cast Jeroen Hazret. Depopulate, alright, that's not too bad. Can save Kellen and still draw. So I won't quite be able to attack with Jeroen Hazret. So I may not want to expose it to a sweeper, because Sunfall gets around general making indestructible and then for now we can um, also use our tide to destroy a planeswalker if we'd like yeah maybe take out something like a uh, wandering emperor here before it can minus even though our is pretty important to counter a sweeper And then I can still play the general if I'd like. Okay. Might have wanted to switch the sequencing a little bit here, so we first mill them and then exile their graveyard. But ended up milling Odawara. So, yeah, worst case, opponent plays a Sunfall, but then we'll be able to follow up with a Hasty Jeru, which is still pretty good. Alright, opponent just main phasing Deluge. Does make it more likely that they're gonna wipe my board next turn, so I'm not sure if I wanna commit an extra creature to the board. They might have the White March in hand, deciding if they wanna pitch something to cast it. I do need Relic of Legends to cast my Jeroen Hazaret. Opponent decides against it. And Cotilda, the draw. Well, it is quite tempting to just get in for an extra 5. So I think I'll go for it. The damage is also adding up with Tiny Bones joins up. This would actually be an attack for lethal, but we suspect a march to exile one of our creatures, and the air opponent going for the White March, having to pitch three cards so they can target Jaren Hazret, but our general actually gives Hexproof, so a little bit better than Bodyguard or Melira would have been here, as we can just fizzle the removal spell and still get a nice attack in. Finding Sigarda. This will put the opponent to one. And yeah, I guess we can just win the game here by putting in Catilda for free, and Tiny Bones will do the rest. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and what do we think of this? Can't really cast any of our enchantments until we play Relic of Legends first. Now Annie is pretty good with the partners, but we would really like to find a cheaper legendary. Yeah, this one's maybe a little too risky. This we can try. And then we want to keep Rona, Katilda, plus maybe Jeru. Although 
we will need to find another red source to cast it. With Rona, that might be feasible. And then Catilda making more mana also plays quite well with Rona. Could also keep Shanna over Jero, but I feel like we'll need something impactful to uh, close out the game for us. Play Seacrum Coast, which can both cast Rona and Catilda on turn two. And want to play our fast lanes as soon as possible. Up against a turn one Swiss Spear. So Rona's a little bit more likely to survive than Catilda on turn two here. That seems fine. And then next turn, I can activate to draw on this card. Play Catilda, untap, maybe still cast another two drop. Put under red white, so it might be more of a heroic style deck with a bunch of pump spells, virtuoso, and slick shot. For now, ancestral anger. Yeah, our deck doesn't play much instant speed removal, so we can't really punish a strategy like this. Erta is actually pretty useful, but can't cast it quite yet. So we'll start by activating Rona. Finding another Joda. Yeah, one of these can go. And then I should probably just pass a turn. There is a one mana card we could find, either Ash Knot or Tiny Bones joins up, I guess. Which I could still cast. Alright, fine. Find Adeline instead. So if Catilda dies, Adeline is something we can actually cast. Airtai could be decent if our opponent plays a Slick Shot or a Virtuoso next, although they could also have ways to protect them. So maybe I discard Airtai and then keep my impactful 5 drops to just hope to uh, go over the top of whatever our opponent is doing. Should be able to play Joda if Catilda survives. And yeah, opponent plotting a show off here. And Scamp is next. So what do we want to do with Rona is the question. Can make a mana, play Joda, make another mana. But I wouldn't be able to uh, cast a 2-drop here, so in that case I prefer drawing and discarding. Then I'm gonna need to keep Rona on defense most likely. Could still die to the slick shot, of course. Angel Fire Ignition, okay. So that it's for five in the air. Opponent goes all out. Alright, so we're not dead yet. Danik as a lifelinker could be useful, but we're not going to get a chance to attack with it before our opponent presents lethal. So I think the plan now is just to get Jaren Hazaret in play. And then the cheaper creatures are maybe more important to keep. So we can actually attack with our 5-drop. So now Rona wants to make mana. So we can play Jeru, trigger Joda, and then still play Denik, although now Iganjo is actually an option too. So that could be an answer to the show-off, although I guess with Ignition it's going to be indestructible. So that may not work out. And then Rona would untap. We'll make a mana. And then now play Iganjo. Play Danik. And we should be able to present lethal here. Can make an extra mana. Tiny Bone joins up. Trigger Rona again. So the show-off is going to have to jump, and then what else do we find? Partners as a reach creature. 
Alright, Pun just takes it. So yeah, even if they trump, they take lethal. If they could have survived, then partners dealing one extra damage with uh, Tiny Bones joins up might have done it. And now we also have a flyer to block the show off, so they would have had to burn us out. Alright, so we got to see this newest iteration of Five Color Legends in action. And we faced a wide range of matchups, all the way from aggro to mid-range to control. And yeah, the deck certainly has a chance against everything. If we have a good draw with Relic of Legends ramping out Joda, anything is possible. And the uh, joins up enchantments certainly spice things up a little bit and give the deck a few more angles of attack that it didn't have access to before. Especially the one mana enchantment, Tiny Bones joins up impressed and is probably going to be a staple in Joda decks going forward since you just want to have some impactful one mana legends to cascade into but the other enchantments are a bit more debatable since they're also harder to cast but yeah if you get a nice turn with any joints up it definitely makes it look quite appealing and gives the deck a bit more removal as well which is always welcome so that'll do it for today's gameplay want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day